Hi there folks, Mark here with the Spokane Public Library and task for today is giving you a quick overview of a new tool in our toolbox, placer.ai and at its heart placer is basically a foot traffic monitoring type of platform so they're looking for those of us who are wandering around with geolocation turned on on our devices so that kind of forms the backbone of their data and then they've got a number of different other data sources that feed into that but um, the way that this works is placer allows you to basically put a geofence around any location in the u.s from as small as 5,000 square feet on up to basically as big as you might want to make it there are some limitations with that though. They don't allow you to put a geofence say around sensitive locations like uh, healthcare facilities or a child care center or middle school or military installations. So things along those lines, they, they don't allow for that. One other stumbling point in terms of kind of setting up those geographic boundaries that you might stumble into is using kind of the River Park Square Mall here as the example. Since Placer is just looking straight down from above for the, for that geolocation, for multi-story facilities like River Park Square, it makes it really hard for Placer to tell. Like, are you up on the third floor at WizKids, or say, are you down on the ground floor at Williams Sonoma? So just know that sometimes data th on that front can get a little bit, a little bit fuzzy. So, as an example, uh, I'll just go ahead and run you through a couple of different features and bits of functionality here within Placer but as the example I have a client that I've been working with off and on and she's interested in opening up her own bakery going forward here in the in the coming year but this year she really wants to get out and kind of test her products at farmers markets so with Placer what we can do is say for example just put a geofence around the location where the Kendall Yards night market happens to occur. And when we open these reports, there's a lot of, a lot of information to dive into here. So Placer, they have data going back as far as 2017 to as recent as three days ago. Um, so super current. I, I've not come across any other tool that allows for that quick of, an, uh, of a turnaround in terms of updating their data. But also, this allows us to set up our geographic time frame really however we want. So if we're looking at the Kendall Yards night market, we can say, all right, who showed up there over the last 30 days? But also, we can put together kind of a customized range. So we could say, all right, yeah, so from June 1st of last year, Let's go change this to 2024. Let's say through the end of September. Oh. There we go. Sometimes the, the calendar is a little squirrely there. But there we go. So now we've got April actually April 1st through the end of September of last year. But then if we really want to be able to zero in on just those types of households and you know, be able to dig into the statistics of who actually shows up for just the night market, night market happens on Wednesdays and from like 4 to 9 or 10 p.m. So running this for all of the summer, that isn't going to really help us. So if we come and add this filter, then we could say, all right, let's just look at Wednesdays within that date range. Then also, let's say from 4 p.m., we'll say until 10 p.m. And then let's apply that. And then once we have kind of that geographic region pinned down as well as our time frame, then we can really start digging into, into the meat of this. So we'll give this a second to, to go ahead and load. All right, so according to Placer, we had about 35 and a half thousand folks showed up over the 
course of those Wednesday nights throughout the summer. And then as we scroll down here, then we get those foot traffic patterns and every one of those spikes. should be a Wednesday. And so as we're looking here, I'm not exactly sure when the, the night market starts, but it, I'm guessing towards the end of May might be the first time. But then it really picks up in early June. But then as we look at this data, we can say, huh, that's weird. What happened on Wednesday, July 10th? And when we open up one of those data points, then we get a little bit of a snapshot here of kind of what was going on and as you might recall, that was the day that it was, I think it got up to 106, and night market was canceled that night. So that's reflected in the data. So from there, as we scroll down, so this is kind of one of my holy grails of stuff that I've been looking for for a number of, of years. And so through other tools, we can tell, all right, how much people are spending on fresh produce around town over the course of a year as an, as an average, but we could never tell where people were actually going to spend those dollars. So now we have these heat maps showing where the households are located that are going to the Kennedy Yards night market. So that is super helpful for marketing efforts, for maybe site location types of questions if you're trying to attract a similar clientele as to what's showing up at the Kindle Yards Night Market. So pretty heavily, I know, Lower South Hill, Kendall Yards, that kind of makes makes sense, but also right around Gonzaga. A lot of Gonzaga students are making the trek over to the Kendall Yards. So if I were the Kendall Yards Night Market Manager, I'd maybe look into running a shuttle back and forth between the Night Market and, and Gonzaga to make it a little easier for those folks to get to and from. So from there, then we've got census level data of kind of where those households are located. Also, uh, other places where people who go to Kendall Yards Night Market, where else they tend to go. And then are people coming from home to go to, to the night market? And then after they leave, do they, do they go out to a restaurant or do they go back home? Uh, the streets and roads that they take to get both to and then from the property. Uh, what time they show up. How long they tend to stick around. So that's all just within the property report here within Placer. So I'm going to stop there with, with this video, but I'll record a subsequent one where it gets extra levels of detail in terms of the demographics of who shows up there. But uh, stay tuned for that, and I'll get that up and going here just in, in the near, near future.